I do have a, a project, something to listen to here up on the board. I went into my server and looked around and said, oh, what do I have that's a studio recording? I have a lot of live stuff for the Rolling Stones and Springsteen and various people. But uh, I thought it might be better to, to have a studio recording. This is there's a band called Squeeze, a British band I've always been a huge fan of. And luckily, uh, I got to mix a couple of records for them. This is from a record called The Knowledge from a couple of years ago. You know, it really is an amazing piece of work. And very few people know about it because Squeeze is a band from the late 70s, of course. But they're still making wonderful music and they're just brilliant. Some days I wonder what I'm doing. I so just to demonstrate some of these effects, like here's the vocal. I waste the hours. It's completely that dry. Sent me, drifting like dust along blood As you lines. see, I can put this on and then I'll have that separates us from each other. That's a really long, that's what they they call St. Joseph's Church. This is the Castle de Har. I smell patchouli, I touch the air above your head. It's got a little pre-delay on it. And this is the Apogee Studio. Again. To that day, the sky went It's really just like an ambience. In Marion Wilson Park. And then here's a... I'm always looking out of windows. That's Clear Mountain's domain. And here the I think that is I always find the last horizon The one we shared then gave away Kind of supposed to sound kind of like the, the, re the album Avalon that I did for Roxy Music years ago. It's just a big, it's like a quarter note delay. Beauty, I'm transported back And then if I switch this over there The sky went dark this is uh, what I call, the preset is Rolling Stones, live Rolling Stones. So that's the kind of thing I would use on a, uh, a live Rolling Stones. And normally I'm mixing those things in surround because they're, they're, they're videos, and that would end up in the rear speakers. That gives you some idea. This guy, Glenn Tilburg, is such a great singer, and not only a great singer, but a crazy, incredible guitar player. If you ever get a chance to go see them live, I would definitely recommend it because uh, they're, they're quite amazing. Okay, and then there's also a bunch of reverbs. There's three reverb kind of settings. There's the Apogee Studio, which is like a warm ambience kind of sound, and you can see a picture of it here. There's the Mix This Chambers, which you can see over here. There's a picture of the Mix This Chambers. And then the, the third one is there's a bunch of different choices. There's things like there's a concrete stairwell, that we found over in Beverly Hills is a marble bathroom that we it was in a theater. And all these things we captured ourselves. You know, me and Roger from Apogee. Mix this shower in my shop. I could take it a little later. We could go into the shop and it's just a it's just a shower. It's kind of a funny sound. Not the greatest sound in the world, but it's it's interesting. There's this what we call the Roscoe chamber, which is a friend of mine named Roscoe who has a studio and just happens to have just a wonderful sounding chamber in his studio. He let me uh, sample it, which is great. And then there's like a, a gated, it's actually gated one of those chambers, like a gated plate. It's kind of, it was the idea of that was to kind of duplicate that Born in the USA snare sound and things like that. And it's something that we used to do back in the 80s a lot that isn't so popular anymore, but it might, who knows, maybe it'll come back. And uh, I use that sort of sound for the horns on Let's Dance as well and a few other things. So really incredibly versatile bit of software. There, there's so many different options in there and lots of places to start. A lot of times I'll do this parallel compression that I was talking about before on the snare drum. You can hear it here. That's just what the snare drum sounds like. Well, that's without any EQ. This is with a bit of top end and a bit of... Well, usually I kind of do something like that, which is like 700 cycles and a bit of low end. And then the other one, that's with the compression, 
1178 compressor and an EQP 1A3 equalizer. And that's the combination. So you get a little bit of the natural sound, but you get that that compression. Not only that, but on, on a uh, on something like that where he's he's sort of rolling, it brings up the in in between notes too. The compression brings that up quite nicely. And then the snare would be, I mean, the under underneath. Do something like this normally. I hadn't dialed anything in yet, so, so that any processing sits. That's, that's pretty nasty sounding. Do that, and a lot of top end. Maybe take out some mid range, then add that in. It just adds add a nice brightness to the to the snares. That day. Here's a sample that I, I added. That's the original bass drum. A bit dull. A bit cardboard. You know, it's a bit sort of sounds like cardboard. I add that in and, and just adds a bit of punch to it. Not only that, but. That's just the live bass drum. I put the sample in, and it just adds a little point to the bass, which is nice. Perhaps I take the path of least resistance. Well, I don't know. Some days I wonder what you're doing, where your life has taken you. A little top end to the overhead. Undying love was all we knew. I smell patchouli, I touch the air above your head. And the rest of it, you know, just. It's a tenor guitar. And these are just two acoustic guitars, which just kind of split left and right. And there's a pedal steel. Now this kind of thing, now this is always fun because I'll, I'll maybe send that into the domain, put it on the left, sending it into the right. So A bit of spin. That's a nice thing for a pedal steel, just so the delays at the right, then it's kind of bouncing, bouncing back and forth. But I'm just sending it into one side of the of the thing. And that's the advantage. It makes it easier if you're sending it off an aux, aux end, and including in the box. I would usually do, if I was mixing in the box, I'd do it the same way. 